So, and talking about SHA-1, SHA-1 is a hash function. It's uh, specified by NSA in 1995. It takes an arbitrary, almost arbitrary length input and it produces an output of 160 bits. And it is supposed uh, to satisfy this, at least these three basic security requirements of hash functions, collision resistance, pre-image resistance, and second pre-image resistance. Uh, at Crypto 2005, uh, Wang, Yin, and Yu showed that uh, collision resistance is not ideal. Uh, it's in fact heavily not ideal. It was a great result. But still, SHA-1 is widely used, and uh, it's believed pre-image resistant. And pre-image resistance is what we are looking at in this talk. Uh, we are given uh, some hash value of 160 bits, and we try to find a message that maps to this to this hash value. Uh, by brute force, we would we would require about two to the 160 trials in average, and any technique that can find the pre-image faster than this is called a pre-image attack. The first such pre-image attack on reduced variant of SHA-1 was presented at Crypto 2008 by Dekanier and Rechtberger. It worked for 44 steps and was about eight times faster than brute force. Only one year later, at Crypto again, uh, Aoki and Sasaki presented an, an attack on 48 steps, and the results now that we can obtain in this paper, they work up to 57 steps. And for previously considered variants, we, we have faster attacks about two to the 10 times faster. Uh, it's clearly an improvement over, over previous attacks, but uh, just to be clear, this is still kind of uh, academic competition because full SHA-1 has 80 steps. So if the competition goes on like it started in the last four years, then uh, we will see pre-image attacks on full SHA-1 at crypto 2020. But then we will all be using uh, SHA-3. So. Uh, in fact, our starting point technically was the attack by Aoki and Sasaki. Uh, they used a uh, uh, meet in the middle attack framework that they developed in a series of papers and which resulted in, in the first pre-image attack on MD5. But MD5 and SHA-1 are, are significantly different in their message expansion. And the translation of the techniques from MD5 to SHA-1 resulted in quite a complicated uh, attack, uh, this attack here by Aoki and Sasaki, uh, and we could need not see how to extend it. But, and finally, what the, the, the reason for our new results or the technical contribution is not any new fancy technique, but just another perspective in general of on these uh, meet in the middle brainage attacks. And this perspective is based on differential cryptanalysis and in particular for SHA-1, this perspective is very natural, so it includes all the techniques by Aoki and Sasaki and just facilitates a lot finding uh, concrete attack parameters resulting to, this, to these new attacks. So let's see how it works. Uh, at the example of SHA-1, SHA-1 is, is a merkle darmgard construction with a Davis-Meyer compression function. Uh, a message is padded then cut into blocks of 512 bits, and each block is, is processed separately by always the same compression function. And this compression function uh, is built from, from a block cipher using a, f a plain text feed forward. Uh, if we consider a one block message, and this is what we do in this talk, then saying that M is a preimage of, of H is the same as saying that uh, the initial value, which is specified by SHA-1, is encrypted to the hash value minus the IV, right? so by this block cipher here. So what we have when is, is kind of a Kirikovic problem. And the idea is to separate this block cipher E into two parts, E1 and E2, and then to check whether uh, M, uh, just a, a randomly chosen message, is a pre-image by computing E1 in the forward direction E2 in the backward direction, and just check whether we have a, a match here in the middle. Uh, the, the difficulty with, with this is that we cannot separate the message into two separate parts, an input to E1 and an input to E2. If you could do this, then the classical meet in the middle attack would apply. That I think was first, uh, first uh, observed by Diffie and Helmel in 77, and which is the reason that we don't use double this, but, but triple this. 
So this does not work here because we cannot separate this message input. Instead, we try to find a differential, uh, a message uh, difference and then an output difference such that these two computations give the same result for all messages that we try. Uh, you can think of this capital delta one as a correction of the small delta one here that we apply to the message. Uh, already here you can see this is quite a strong assumption that such a differential exists for all messages, meaning that it's in differential terms it's a, a probability one differential on the whole state and we will have to extend this later. The same thing we need for the backward direction, a delta two differential. And then the principle of the attack is as follows. We pick a message and we do these four computations. Two computations in forward direction, two computations in the backward direction. Note here that this is the delta two differential uh, that holds for, for E2 and this is the delta one differential that holds for E1. So these two computations and these two computations will not be the same in general. And now here, if we have a match, or if we meet on the top, then it's clear M is a preimage. It's a bit more complicated if we meet here, but by definition of the delta one differential, we can just add here the difference to the message and correct it with the capital delta one. We have still the same computation, the two capital delta one cancel out, and what we see is that M plus delta one is a differential. So, and it, it works in the same way for the, the other two. And as a result, what we have done now is we have tested four messages at the, com at the cost of only two computations of E. Uh, one computation of E1 and one computation of E2 is equivalent to one computation of E. So, and this is, this is the speed up that we can obtain. In general, we will, we will choose more differentials in both directions, two to the D differential. They are uh, a linear subspace of the, of the messages. And then this allows us to compute two to the 2D message at the cost of only two to the D. And this is the source of speed up of, of the attack. So now, as I said, the, the critical part is do such differentials exist? And for Shawan, they exist. They exist like, like this if E1 and E2 only compute 15 steps. So in total, we can attack 30 steps. To attack more steps, we have to lower the assumptions on these differentials. And in differential creep analysis, it's, it's very natural what, what you have to do. You have to allow for uh, probabilistic and uh, differentials and for truncated differentials. Both are con very common concepts in differential creep analysis that we just use here for meeting the middle attack. Uh, this means that we allow the differential to hold only for many M, not for all, and we match here only, or we, we require equality only on a certain uh, subset of bits and not on the whole state. Uh, the same way in the backward direction. Uh, and then during the matching procedure, during the attack, we only compare this subset of bits this introduces errors, uh, two types of errors. We can miss actual preimages that must be compensated by testing more messages, and we can have false positives. That means that we have to, to retest our, our positives, and both things uh, increase complexity, and uh, you have to trade these, these two errors to find optimal attack parameters. Uh, just very quickly, for Shawan, it, it seems to be the hard part to find these differentials, but for Shawan, in fact, it's not that difficult because this GF2 linear message expansion facilitates things a lot. So without going into the details, uh, because this, this key, uh, message expansion is linear, you can find some relatively, a relatively small set of, of obvious candidate message differences, delta one and delta two, just by linear algebra. And, and the, corresponding, the corresponding correcting output differences, you can find them by linearizing the step transformations. This also, this is a common technique in differential collision attacks. And among all these candidates, uh, you can do a simple experimental search to find the best one, which gives us the, which gives you the, the, the attack parameters. Uh, for all our attacks, the whole set of attack parameters, so these differentials is given in the 
e-print version of the paper. There is a small technical, uh, a small technicality. If you uh, want that you image that you are supposed to find should have a correct padding, then this is a imposes a restriction on the choice of your message differences, uh, and this uh, increases the complexity. But for this also, there is there's a nice uh, a, a nice idea in the paper. Uh, instead of finding a one block preimage, you can find a trick with a two block preimage, uh, pre and then you can avoid this this complication. And as a result, you can find uh, uh, almost at the same cost you can find a correctly padded two block preimage as you can find a, a, a one block preimage without padding. Uh, to summarize. This is illustration of, of our results. The pluses here are the one block preimages without padding. The bullets are the two block preimages with, with the correct padding, so what we want. And this here for comparison, this is the Aoki Aoki's, Aoki's Sasaki result. It was the best result before. And this finishes my talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>